Hello everyone, I bet you didn't know I had these glasses. Uh, so there's absolutely nothing I can do in a short film like this to do justice to who Peter Beard was and what he was able to accomplish in his life and career. We lost one of the eccentrics a few weeks ago. We lost one of the originals when the, with the passing of Peter Beard. Um, my, I have a couple of hopes with this film. For those of you who know about Beard and are familiar with his work, maybe this is a way for you to re-engage with it after an extended period of time perhaps. And for those of you uh, unfortunate to not know who Peter Beard was, I'm hoping that this is a good introduction because I think he's a, he's a testament to what's possible in the world of art, photography, nature, conservation, etc. So my goal here is threefold. I wanna give you a little bio on who he was. And again, I can't do justice to it uh, in this film. I also wanna tell you about my personal relationship with him, which did not come in a one-on-one. -on -one. It came through a sort of uh, muddled two, three, four layers deep association, but I have a print here that has uh, his fingerprints all over it. And then I want to talk about the book and I want to show you why I think this book is great. So in a nutshell, this is part one. Peter Beard began work on the end of the game, which is the book that we are going to talk about today. In 1955, originally published in 65, it's a landmark book about Africa. Shortly after settling in Africa in 1961, think about what Africa was like in 1961, by the way. He began working on Longing for Darkness, a tribute to the life of Karen Blixen in Kenya. In 64 and 65, he worked in Savo National Park during the first years of the elephant habitat crisis. And then in 66 in Murchison Falls, Uganda, studying elephant and hippo population dynamics. Beard's work on the crocodile population of Lake Rudolph for the Kenya Game Department from 66 to 68 resulted in the best-selling Eyelids of Mourning, The Mingled Destinies of Crocodiles and Men. That is an incredible book as well. I don't have that book, but I've seen it, and it's just one of many uh, he also did Peter Beard's African Journal. He, the book that I discovered Peter Beard through is called The Adventures and Misadventures of Peter Beard in Africa. He has quite an extensive list to his name in terms of book credits. And the work that he did in Savo in the 64 and 65 was the work that really put him on the radar with me. I had never seen conservation photography like that. And I had never seen it done through someone who was so talented in so many other ways and so eccentric. So that's a little bit of blurbs uh, of blurb. I work for blurb. That's a little bit of Beard's history. And uh, it, again, I can't even begin to scratch the surface. So Beard was a photographer, but I don't think he ever identified himself as a photographer. The camera was a tool that just allowed him to accomplish the projects that he needed to get done. It was like, I think, I think in his life, the rifle, the paintbrush, the pen, and the camera were probably on relatively equal, equal par. They were just tools that allowed him what, to do whatever he needed to accomplish, whether it was a conservation project, a photography project, a fashion shoot. Um, I heard him interviewed more than once and he described himself as a diarist, somebody who created diaries. And if you have not seen Peter Beard's journals and diaries, you are completely missing out. Um, but there's time because they're still out there. They're, they're highly prized objects that are in ga different galleries around the world, different museums around the world. But Beard's journals and diaries are simply the best I've ever seen. And he has been, I hate to say this, he's been ripped off hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times by what I would call sort of lesser artists who realized the talent and uniqueness of what Beard was doing and then tried to snatch little pieces of it. I saw this happen in the 90s, I saw it happen in the 2000s, where I would see work and I would just immediately go, no, you can't do that, you can't like steal from Beard like that. But it happened because his work is so incredibly unique and detailed. The photographs of him working on these journals in Africa in the middle of nowhere, including the cover of the book Adventures and Misadventures of Peter Beard in Africa, that cover of him laying inside of a giant crocodile while he's working on his journal is a, is a book that will be etched forever in my mind. So let's, let's do a couple of things here. I know this is gonna be difficult to show from the position I'm in, but I have a photograph here that is made of Peter Beard. And there are so many reflections in this room. I'm guessing you can't see this, but I'll, I'll shoot some details of it. So this is a photograph shot six by seven black and white film in a Mamiya that was photographed by a photographer in Dana Point, California named Art Brewer. And if you don't know Art Brewer, then this is the your bonus prize. Um, actually, there's gonna be four people that I'm gonna introduce you to that are all connected to Blurb in some way. And so we have Beard here, we have Art Brewer, we have Michael Knapper, and we have Daryl Dugas. And Daryl, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. But these are four friends, three friends of mine that are all influenced by Beard. And we subsequently met over the years and realized that each of us had been influenced by Beard in some way, shape, or form. When I first went to Art Brewer's studio in Dana Point, I looked above his desk 
and there was a Peter Beard, and I was blown away. And so Art knew that I loved Peter. So Art found himself in Montauk, New York, photographing, I think, surfing. And he stumbled into Peter laying out what apparently was going to become his show in LA, which is what he's doing in this photograph. So Art shot the picture, made a print, gave it to me. So I happen to know someone in LA whose name's David Fahey. He's a gallerist in LA, Fahey Klein. It's one of the best photo galleries I've ever been to in my life. And David Fahey is just a gem of a guy. When I first met David Fahey, I creeped into the gallery way back in the early 90s, and I was looking around the gallery, and I came to the back, and I looked, and David was in his office smoking a pipe, and above his desk on the far wall was a Peter Beard, and I was angling outside the door trying to get a look at it, and without looking up, David said, what are you doing out there? And I go, oh, I'm trying to look at that Peter Beard, and he said, well, come in and sit down. And we talked, I came in, sat down, I'm still friends with him today, he's awesome. So I gave this Art Brewer print to David Fahey, who then gave it to Beard, and Beard drew all over it. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a little thought bubble and it says, Weird Weekend, he drew a knife in his back. At the bottom it says, Church Estate, Montauk Point, August 1997. So I have an original Art Brewer slash Peter Beard print in my collection. And it, this is one of my all time favorite prints. It's incredibly personal to me. It's always hanging in my office, wherever I live, whatever my office looks like, this is where this print is. So that's my connection to Beard. I found him in 1993 in the Phoenix Public Library when I was an intern at the Arizona Republic. I was a photography intern, I had no money. So when I wasn't working, I basically walked around downtown Phoenix and I happened to live close to the Phoenix Public Library. And I went into the library and I was just walking around the stacks. I love libraries. I can walk in stacks all day. And I came across this book called The Adventures and Mis Misadventures of Peter Beard in Africa, which was not in the photography section. And I checked it out, took it home, and it completely changed my life. And from that day on, I kept a journal my whole life, but from that day on, I really doubled down on realizing how important the journal was for my life and my career. And that was my intro to this man. Okay, so let me give you a little, some specs on this book before we get started. So the book that we're featuring today, and again, he did Eyelids of Morning, Mingled Crocodiles, min, min, blah, 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 Mingled Destinies of Crocodiles and Men. He did Peter Beard's African Journal. He's done a ton of books, they're all fantastic. The book that we're looking at today is called The End of the Game. And this was really my introduction to the, the wildlife slash habitat crisis in Africa. This was, this was the first time I saw the collision between man and nature and it is ugly, and it's bad. And Beard went out, and again, Beard was, was an eccentric guy. People called him a socialite. He was married at one point to a supermodel. He liked to party. Uh, so there were many sides to this guy, and there were detractors because I'm sure people were jealous, et cetera. But what P Beard was at heart was a conservationist. I once went to a Franz Lanting lecture in the Bay Area, and if you don't know Franz Lanting, he's one of the best wildlife photographers in the world and has been for the, probably the last 40 years, and he's also a really intelligent guy. And I went to a lecture of his once, and he started his entire presentation with a tribute to Peter Beard, and I was blown away. I was like, I thought I was the only one that knew about Peter Beard. I wasn't, not even close. So this is what happens when you give your copy of the book to your wife to take to have Peter Beard sign the book. What you end up with, is Peter Beard drawing his hand in the book and signing, crossing out the end of the game, and signing the book to your wife and not you. So, moral of the story, don't give the book to your wife. So I just wanna call out here, before I, I give you the overhead view, and call, I wanna call out how this book was done. Because again, every time I do one of these books, reviews, and this is not a review, these are just books I love, I'm not a book expert, I'm not a design expert, I just respond to things and these books change my life. That's why I'm doing this. So Ruth Ansel did the design. And Ruth, I, have to, I don't know you, I have to say there are aspects of this that I think are dated to the time frame that the book was made, but dated in a really good way because I lived through that time frame and I saw the changes in the publishing industry, I saw the changes in the design industry and the merger of those two things. So this book reminds me of that time, and I'll get to some of these um, design elements in a, min in a minute. Uh, this was printed in China. I can give you the ISBN number, but I know you don't need it. The cover design was done by Laura Lovett. It's typeset in Birch and Bethold Caslon. The interior was designed by Ruth Ansel, uh, and this was done by Chronicle Books in San Francisco. Chronicle's amazing. I'm sure most of you know who Chronicle, uh, are familiar with that, with that publisher. Uh, but I just wanted to call out the designers. That's about all the information they're giving me here. So 
let's take a look at why I think this book is valuable and why this book changed my life. And I actually bought a copy of this for my father. I think it's the only photo book I ever bought for my father because he didn't like photography. He didn't like photography books, but the whole African angle side and the history was what hooked him in. Let's talk about the book. All right, my friends, let's talk about this book. I'm a little bit nervous because I like this book so much. Peter Beard, End of the Game. So it's a flexi cover. It's not a hard cover, not a soft cover. It's somewhere in between. I love flexi cover. I think it's a smart, uh, smart way to make many of the books that I see I wish were flexi instead of hard and instead of soft, but that's the cover type. This is what happens when you give the book to your wife to have Peter sign it. He signs it to her. So mental note, keep that in mind. So let's move in. This is the first, this is the work of Peter's that got me interested in Peter Beard. This is the Sabo uh, National Park. This is an elephant that's starving, that's fallen on its side. And when they die, their legs keep moving and the body moves in a circle. They leave these uh, circular patterns on the earth. It's tragic, sad, etc. cetera. Um, this is one of the single most incredible photographs I've ever seen of an elephant herd. I do not think we have elephant herds of this size anymore. I hope I'm mistaken, but I don't think we do. This is a picture that I first saw in 1993 and I've never been able to forget it, which tells you it's a great, great photograph. Um, it's based 100% on subject matter. Um, it's just astounding to me. All right, so let's move in here. I've posted noted quite a bit of this. This is the, um, the title page and what I want to bring to your attention. And this to me is reflective of the time frame when this book was designed. But look at the number of different typefaces on this one page. I mean, typically when a book is designed, that's not a common occurrence to use that many typefaces, but they did, and they did it really well. And let me just give you a note about the typefaces because they are in here somewhere. Maybe it's here that I'm looking for. So they are, the book is typeset in 11 point Caslon old style, but there is an antique typefaces from the Frederick Nelson Phillips collection, which is what they're, what they're using. Again, I want to call out Ruth Ansel for doing the design. And then Laura Lovett did the cover design, just in case you're wondering. Table of contents. Let me go to some of these. You've got a, a foreword written by the VP of Kenya. That's always a nice touch if you can get that. And I love these, this type treatment. Look at that. That in itself is a little work of art. And it's only a detail on the page. So you've got this pretty masculine, super strong, charging rhino image, a nice illustration. And then you've got this beautiful use of, of typography. I absolutely love that. Love the details. One of the things that you see in, this, in a lot of Beard's books, in this book as well, is there are little drawings, little illustrations all throughout the book. And those are done by one person in particular. And his name is uh, Comante. And you'll see, here's a little tribute to him, but this is a reoccurring theme in a lot of his work. So a lot of these illustrations were done by him. But let's go through. Um, the other, another thing I really love is the, the handwriting. Uh, Dwayne Michaels is another photographer that has remarkable handwriting, but this is such a part of the experience to me. Now remember, this is not a book about Beard saying, I'm a great photographer. This is not a photographer-driven book. This is a story or subject-driven book. Beard is showing you and illustrating history, and the presence of African game in the collision with humanity, going all the way back to the great white hunters and this whole time frame, the out of Africa time frame, Karen Blixen, Bohr Blixen, um, Dennis Finch Haddon, the Percivals. These are all really famous names in this, in this part of Africa during this time. The handwriting is such a personal touch. I absolutely, I love it. It's all I can say. Again, a drawing from Monte. And there's Karen Blixen. Very important player. I love the time frame. The, this book has a lot of historical photographs. In, in fact, they're primarily historical photographs. But to see women hunting game in Africa is just an interesting thing for me because when you think of big game hunters, you don't necessarily think of women hunters, but they were there uh, as well. And the stories of some of these women is just remarkable. So another, another thing, another reason to pick up this book. Um, some of the designs, as you can see, are these pages are relatively busy. But the combination of the images and the illustrations, I think, works really well. All right, so let me skip through here. Some classic photographs here. I've seen this, this image printed like wall size with writing and artwork all around it, all over it. Very classic beard. Lots and lots of spreads like this. This is a book you can open at any point and start and look and learn because each of these have little captions on them, little bits of data that you can spend hours studying these pages. There's Peter Beard and uh, Karen Blixen in 1962 here. So that's just one little thing. I mean, if you look closely at that image, it's a pretty remarkable picture in what they're doing. 
So, um, all right, let's move on here. Whoa, my post-its are stuck. All right, let's see here. Don't want to get too close to this guy. That would be my first piece of advice. I'm going to skip through some chunks here. There's just so much. You start to see the beard journals emerging. That's a person who's been eaten, by the way. Uh, not something you see very often. But this is the beginnings of the emergence of the journals, which I think is really interesting. This is a photograph that I remember from 1993. This is the railway line that cuts Sabo National Park. You have an eaten side and a non-eaten side. That to me personifies, without, without, without actually seeing the actual animals, this is about game management. This is what happens when game is not managed or managed depending on your situation. That's what we're after. And so I think the world is actually in this, this collision that's happening is happening all over the world as we speak. So even though this book was done many years ago, it's evident that we really didn't learn our lesson in a lot of ways. And it's a book that's even more relevant today perhaps than when, when it was first uh, published. All right, so let's move on here. I don't wanna to take too much time. Talk about a strong pairing. Just let that sink in for a minute. Um, very interesting edit on this book as well. There's just so much content. Look at that, the, af the uh, zebra hides. You know, here's a human right here in the middle. And you, you, you think about the excess and the, the amount of game that was being taken during this time frame, and it's kind of astounding. But again, this book also has a ton of copy. There's a history lesson in here that covers all kinds of data and information. All right, let me see here. Let's move on. How about a little Roosevelt? Who doesn't love a little Roosevelt in their book? I mean, relevance, 1909 on his way up country. This is in the Mombasa, and he's heading up to Percival's territory. Um, just remarkable. Okay, let me, the last thing I wanna show is this is the work, and this, the chapter is titled Nor Dread Nor Hope Attend. This is the work that I, I first saw from Beard, which was this. And these are dead, starving, dying elephants. And you might think, okay, this is, this is horrible. Lots of pages like this. To, this really drives home the point this was not a one-off. This was not a single animal that wandered away, got sick because it was old or had a disease. This is rampant. This is what happens when you collide humans and wildlife. And so it goes on and on. And I think it should go on and on because again, we have not learned our lesson. And I also think that there is a poetic beauty in some of these images. I think that is an, that's an, actually is a beautiful photograph of a terrible, a terrible thing. And I think that's really the lesson. I think, I think, and again, I don't know Beard, I never met him, but I think if you listen to the interviews that he did late in his life, they were very much about nature and very much about saying, look, we've sort of lost our connection and we need to do whatever we can to get it back. So if you have a chance to pick up a copy of this book, I highly recommend it. You cannot have mine, and it's definitely not because it's signed to my wife. So I appreciate you tuning in to watch one of these, another one of these book reviews. Uh, I have, I've, as you can see, I've got many, many hundreds of photography books that I need to get through. I think this is a valuable series. I think it's valuable too, not just because I'm bringing your attention to books that I think are valuable, but I am not a book expert. I've worked for Blur for 10 years. A lot of people think I'm some sort of publishing whiz. I'm not. I have no design background. I was a photographer my whole life. That's my primary area of focus. And I think actually for that reason, I can sort of describe these books in layman's terms. And, and really a book is so much more than the sum of the parts. It's the photographs, it's the story behind it, it's the design, that's a huge part of it, it's the publisher, it's, it's all the decisions that go, in for something, that go into something like this landing in the world. So I hope this has illuminated you to another book that's out there waiting for you to purchase. And, um, and I'll see you next time.